Hey guys, it's coming against me, another movie for guys, continuing my 31 days of horror movie reviews, and I know this is a movie that just came out, but honestly guys, I'm counting this as 31 days of horror, and I'll tell you guys exactly why. This movie, while some people I think have categorized it as gothic romance, I really feel is a horror romance, and I think fits perfectly into the idea of 31 Days of Horror. What I want to do in 31 Days of Horror, this movie portrays perfectly, and definitely, I think, is a good placeholder for 31 Days of Horror. I know I'm very behind, so to stop myself from being behind, I'm counting this as 31 Days of Horror. I'm sorry, guys, I know that's cheating, but that's what I'm doing. Um, but that movie I'm reviewing is Crimson Peak, and as you guys know, Crimson Peak was one of the most anticipate movies for the rest of the year. I could not wait for this movie. All the trailers were just so good. I couldn't wait to see how it was. It looked creepy. It looked scary. It looked like it was going to be true horror. And also looked like it had a very interesting story. And I really didn't know what was going to happen in this movie. But I started to get a bit worried. Because, you know, the reviews have not been the best. People have said, oh, the movie's not as good and everything. And I really didn't know what it was getting into. But I did go into it pretty excited on what was going to happen. And I have to say... I came out not disappointed at all, guys. I absolutely love Crimson Peak. I don't think there's a single critic I've seen that really does understand this movie. To me, I think Crimson Peak is one of the best movies of the year. I don't know what I don't understand what people are saying about it. It's not a perfect movie. It does have one or two problems, but I do think overall, as a movie, it is absolutely fantastic. I really loved it, and... I definitely think that it's a lot different than what, um, it is different, it's, ex it was pretty much exactly what I wanted it to be, and also, I found it to be very unpredictable as well, and we're gonna get into that, but let's get to the plot of Crimson Peak. Now, the plot, I definitely really do love to this movie. We focus on this character, Edith. Now, Edith is a girl that lost her mother at a very young age, and ever since then, she's been haunted by visions of her. Her mother is telling her, you know, beware of Crimson Peak, she doesn't really know what it means, and she is an author, you know, now, that tries to write about her experiences with ghosts, and what happens with that, and one day, this guy, Thomas, comes up to her because he wants to uh, work with her father. Um, you know, he's interested in helping out her father with something. He wants to work for him. And he ends up meeting up with Edith and he decides to possibly, um, he wants to marry her, basically, so he takes her to his home. When she gets to his home, she starts to realize that there's a lot more going on with Thomas than she thinks, and that basically is the plot of Crimson Peak, and I think that is a fantastic plot. I really love the plot of this movie. And yes, it's not the most original plot ever, but this movie is so unpredictable. Not a single, there wasn't a single thing, you know, there wasn't, there's, there's not a single thing I think about this movie that's predictable. I honestly didn't predict anything that was going to happen in this movie, and I really love that. And I think that's one of the things that makes the movie so great right off the bat. Another thing that works so well is that this is one of the most solid casts of the year by far. Everyone in this movie is an amazing performance. I think everyone was fantastic, starting off with Mia Wasikowska, who I thought was perfectly casted as Edith. This is by far Mia Wasikowska's best performance. I mean, I've seen her do some good stuff, but nothing like this. Her The character of Edith, I really love. First of all, she's not your typical uh, horror movie heroine. She's a lot more powerful, and this is a girl that is just trying to live a life of normalcy. She's constantly haunted by these ghosts. She doesn't know what the hell they're talking about, you know, what Crimson Peak is and everything, and she's just trying to be normal. She wants people to, you know, she wants to be able to live a normal life. She wants to re read these stories, um, you know, she wants to write these stories, and you really see her passion for that, but the thing I love about Edith as a character is how scared she is. You really see the fear in her. You really see um, how much this is changing her as a person, and she did a fantastic job in the movie. A lot of people complain that she doesn't develop as a character. I just saw it as she's broken from the beginning. She really is broken. She's trying to hide it, and I think Mia Wasikowska just portrayed all of that perfectly. Her narration was great. Perfect um, casting for the main character of this film, definitely. Tom Hiddleston as well, I thought was great. I was obviously expecting him to be great. But the thing I love about Thomas as a character is how layered he is. He, Thomas is a very layered character. He's not exactly um, what you think he's going to be. And that's something I definitely really loved about his character. Uh, the romance between these two is really great, definitely. They have very good chemistry. You really see it between them. And I thought Tom Hiddleston, I can't teach much about his character, but he did a very good job, and I definitely really loved what he did. However, by far the standout of this movie, and I was so shocked that she was a standout, but the standout of this movie by far is Jessica Chastain as Lady Lucille Sharp.
I, I was honestly just so impressed by Jessica Chastain in this movie. Nobody's really talked about her, which sucks because not only is Jessica Chastain the best in this movie, she plays the best villain I've seen all year. And yes, Immortan Joe was a great villain in uh, Mad Max Fury Road. But the thing I love about Lady Lucille Sharp is just what makes her character so menacing. The second this character is introduced, you can tell that there's something off about her. She's just very uptight to Edith. Even in, in the smallest of moments when she's trying to be a friend to Edith, you can tell there's something more going on there. She has a much darker agenda than we think she does, and she really just sold it perfectly. And she really goes with the idea of this movie of madness and what love can do to you and how it can drive someone just to their breaking point and make them go insane. You really see that in Jessica Chastain's performance. I mean, she has some incredible scenes in this movie. She sold it all perfectly, and I thought she was by far the best uh, performance in this movie, definitely. It's also, I think, one of her best performances. She's very creepy, but she's also crazy. I mean, especially towards the end of this movie, she goes pretty batshit, but it makes sense because of what love is doing to her. I mean, you can tell by, that her and Thomas have a much deeper relationship than just brother and sister. It pretty much is incest, and we know this right in the beginning of this movie. We can tell that's what's going on between them, and and she really sells that perfectly. You can see the bond she has with Thomas, why she loves him so much, and you really see throughout the movie what's going on with her. I thought she did an incredible job, and she was fantastic in this movie. Just definitely Jessica Chastain is the best part of this movie, definitely. Uh, Charlie Hunnam, I was a bit worried about because he's not the best actor ever. He's he, I'm not a huge fan of Sons of Anarchy, as you guys know. He's not the best actor ever. I thought he was really good, though, in this movie is Alan McMichael because there's the thing I love about Alan as a character is they didn't do what I thought they were going with. I thought he was simply going to be just another love interest for Edith, and that's not what this is at all. There's no point in this movie where we have a love triangle between Thomas and Alan. It's never that. Alan is investigating Thomas throughout the movie, trying to find out details about him, but throughout the whole movie, you can just tell that Alan is supposed to be more of the guy that actually is right for Edith, while Thomas is more of the guy that is, you know, something's off about him. And I thought Charlie Hum did a very good job in the movie. Not as good as the main three, but he definitely, he held his own, definitely. I thought he was a lot better than I thought he was going to be. He was very good, and I really enjoyed his um, acting in the movie. Jim B uh, Jim Beaver, as well as Edith's father, was also very good. Not in the movie as much as you think, but he definitely did a very good job. And I thought everyone in this movie was absolutely fantastic, definitely. And I thought everyone was... Um, amazing. Really, they were. Um, the directing by Guillermo del Toro was something I was definitely looking forward to because at Comic-Con, Guillermo del Toro said how he wanted to make this um, like his other films. He wanted to make this bloody. He wanted to take some risks with this movie, and he did it perfectly. And I really don't think that people are getting the deep symbolism that this movie has. Everyone's saying, oh, this is just style over substance. It's not. It, clearly the movie is all about what love can do to someone and how crazy and how true love might not actually be a very good thing and how crazy it can make someone. Um, and I think it's very well done the way he directed that. He also had so many homages to old movies in this movie. I mean, there's so many points where the movie cuts to black and comes back and it just, he directed it so perfectly. This is a very dark movie from the very beginning. I thought it was very well done. And yes, there are some hopeful things throughout the movie. In fact, the beginning of the movie is actually pretty happy. There's even some comedy in there, but that just goes with the tone of the movie. I thought the tone was executed perfectly. It was spot on, and I thought Guillermo del Toro perfectly directed this movie. One of his best movies by far. He's really had some hits and miss lately, but this is definitely a hit. He did this perfectly, and I thought he his directing was absolutely fantastic, definitely. Uh, the writing as well, I thought, was just so great. One of the best screenplays of the year by far. It's such an interesting story. You know, you feel trapped in this movie. You really do. I mean, Edith feels trapped. You feel trapped. You never leave this house. I mean, there are points where, yeah, they do go out of the house, but when you're in this house, you feel trapped. You feel like you're stuck with Edith. Like, you can't get out of here and something bad is going on. And it's so well done the way that it was handled. And people have said the movie really isn't a horror movie. Again, I really would consider it a horror romance. But something I really did love is the way the ghosts are here in this movie. They're not at all an antagonist. In fact, they're kind of helping out Edith. They kind of warn her about things that are coming. And I definitely really like that. In fact, you could even say that they're kind of like... Um, the thing that helped her and help survive in this movie. I thought they, the ghost element was definitely very well done. And I really like the idea of this not exactly being a movie about ghosts, but it being a ghost a movie with ghosts. And that's kind of what Edith says in the movie. She says in the beginning that this is not a story about ghosts, but a story with ghosts in it. And I definitely do agree uh, with that statement because that definitely is how this movie is. The movie is a lot more emotional and deeper than I thought it was going to be. And I definitely really love that. And also, the climax of this movie... 
Holy shit, by far, I think the most intense climax I've seen all year. I was, I've was i never been so riveted by a climax in a while. I was on the edge of my seat. I didn't know what was going to happen, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The writing was just great, and I really did love it. Some people have said the writing's very cheesy, but let me tell you guys this. If you like the writing in Penny Dreadful, you're going to really like the writing in this, because this definitely reminded me of a Penny Dreadful episode, and that's great. That's what I wanted out of this movie. And no, I'm not saying I wanted this to be exactly like Penny Dreadful, but for the time period, they sell it perfectly. You really feel like you're in the 1800s in this movie. Well, 19, 1900s in this movie. You really feel like you're there. They did that perfectly, and I thought that was great. Also, the way information is revealed in this movie, I definitely also really enjoyed. It's very gradual. They don't reveal everything at once. They do it very gradually, and that's something I definitely really love. But it is a movie you have to pay close attention to because you probably will miss something if you don't pay attention to it. Uh, but the cinematography is some of the best of the year, honestly. Some of the best of the year. Gorgeous sets, gorgeous costumes. Everything was just perfect in this movie. The cinematography is really its own character. It goes with the dark, deep tone of this movie. And it just, it's beautiful to look at. Every shot in this movie looks amazing. Even the snow in this movie, is it's symbolizing something. There's always blood in the snow. And that's something I thought was definitely very, very well done. I also really loved uh, the, the, just the lights and darks of this movie. It's a very big deal when it comes to cinematography. When it's light, it's a very light hard scene. Then when it's dark, we're in when they're in the house, it's never fully light. It's always dark. It's always like you're just trapped here and that there's this is a dark place and that we shouldn't be here. And that's something I thought they sold perfectly. I thought the right I thought the cinematography was spot on. It was amazing to look at and it just looked fantastic. And I know a lot of people have said it's the best part of the movie. I honestly think Jessica Chastain is the best part of the movie, but definitely is one of the best things about the movie. It was amazing to look at. Every shot looked great. The ghosts looked amazing as well. Holy shit, they look great. And I thought overall the house as well looked fantastic, and the cinematography was absolutely incredible. Uh, the attention to detail as well in this movie is something that's very important. There's a lot of attention to detail that I definitely really enjoyed, and I thought that was definitely really great. The score as well is fantastic stick to this movie. It's sometimes happy, it's sometimes very sad, and then it's very, very thrilling, and I thought the score was perfect. Not one of the best scores of the year or anything, but I honestly really liked the score. I thought it was really well done, especially for this movie. It was very, very good. The editing to this movie, I thought, was uh, really great overall. My only real complaint with this movie, I can honestly say, is the editing. There are a couple scenes that felt like they didn't really need to be in there, and they felt kind of same-ish. And the second half of this movie, a large part of it is Edith thinking she keeps hearing these ghosts, and she goes outside, and there's nothing there, and it just, it kind of felt like, okay, this is just kind of same-ish, and I thought that was just not really well needed. And also the very ending of this movie, I'm not talking about the climax, the climax was awesome. The very last scene I just felt was a bit... Uh, abrupt. I felt like the movie ended a bit too abruptly. I felt like they could have added a little bit more to it. And that's really all my complaints with this movie in terms of that. It does have a few pacing issues here and there, but I thought the editing was so cool. The way they did the cuts to black, I thought was definitely really cool. It definitely felt like an older horror movie, but the movie definitely takes some risks. I mean, this movie is graphic. When I say this movie is graphic, it is graphic. I mean, there there's blood splattering everywhere. There's people getting chopped up. I mean, there's some graphic stuff to this movie, but I definitely really loved it. I thought that was definitely very well done, and I really, really enjoyed that. But I, like I said, the movie was also extremely unpredictable. I didn't know where the movie was really going, especially in the third half of the movie. I didn't know what was going to happen. I definitely really loved that, and I thought that was definitely something I really enjoyed. But the editing overall was very good. There were just some parts where it was a bit choppy, but I thought the story they were trying to tell, they really sold it very well, and I, di I thought the movie was interesting the whole time. There really wasn't a part where the movie wasn't interesting. I just felt there were some scenes that were just went on a bit too long or could have been cut out, definitely. That's really all I have to say in terms of complaints. But now I definitely want to talk about spoilers because I'm talking about spoilers this movie, okay? This is a movie that I have to talk about spoilers for. But before I talk about spoilers, I just want to tell you guys that Crimson Peak, it's a fantastic movie. Go out and see it. It's creepy. It's scary. It's uh, very sexual as well. And I definitely really loved about this movie. So um, let's get into the insane climax that is the third half of this movie. Um... Because it's insane. It truly is something insane. I have not seen something that insane in a while, and I thought they sold it perfectly in this movie. I thought it was just so well done, especially, and it really became great for me after, of course, we find out that Thomas has had all these different brides, and 
you know, he's done this with all these different girls. He's basically gotten them, you know, gotten some money from them, and then he's killed them, and that's what he's tried to do. However, he's fallen in love with her, and again, that really goes with uh, what the movie is really trying to say here, that the, you know, that the movie is really trying to say uh, how love can be your worst enemy, and the fact that he's fallen in love with her, I knew he would fall in love with her, I knew it was gonna happen, but I really love the way it was handled in the movie, because you don't know if this is real or not, and then you realize that, oh shit, he has fallen in love with her, he never planned on it, but it actually happened, and he can't kill her because he's just so upset, and when Lucille killed him, I thought that was insane. I didn't think she was going to kill him at all, but that was just the last straw for her. She needed to kill him, and when she reveals to Edith why she loved him so much and that, you know, everyone thought that he was a problem and she wanted him to live and she, you know, really always loved him, and I thought that was definitely very well done. The movie got insane the once she took out that butcher knife. When she took out that butcher knife, I was terrified, honestly. Lucille was terrifying after this, and I thought she was fantastic in this scene. You didn't know what was going to happen. I was terrified of this entire scene, and the scene with her and Edith, I didn't know what was going to happen with that. I'm very happy that Edith killed her because she needed to die. I was really hoping that Lucille was going to die, but for a moment, I honestly thought that she was going to get away with it. It really seemed like that's what was going to happen, and uh, I definitely thought that was very interesting, the way uh, the movie did that. Um... And then the ending of the movie where Edith and uh, Alan leave um, Crimson Peak, I thought was the perfect ending to the movie. I also really love the way it ended with us seeing the ghosts. You know, Lucille is still playing the piano and uh, Thomas is now steeped in sorrow and shame. It's just, it's very sad. I just felt there could have been at least one more scene to the movie, but I thought it was a very good ending overall. It was very rewarding, and especially for what was going on in the movie, it really felt like that's that it, the movie came full circle after that, and that's something I definitely really loved. That was definitely really great, and really, like I said, it, the movie had so much to say about love and how it can make someone go crazy, and Lucille is the perfect example of that. She loved Thomas so much, and uh, that she just, she was crazy, and she went crazy for him, because of the fact that he fell in love with someone else, she never thought of that possibility happening, and he never had sex with, you know, someone else either, he always had sex with, uh, with, you know, Lucille, he never had sex with another girl before, and I thought it was very interesting that we found out that the reason she was so pissed is not just that he's falling for Edith, but that he's never had sex with anyone else besides Lucille, and I thought that was very interesting when we found that out. I really loved that twist, I have to say. And also, the twist that Lucille was the one that killed Carter, I was shocked at that scene. I was for sure that uh, Thomas killed Carter, but then we realized that Thomas is not as dark as we thought he was. I mean, yeah, he's done some bad things, but Lucille really is the reason why he's so demented and why he's so dark and why he's doing these things, because he's been manipulated by his sister all these years, and... I really love that story. It's a very dark and just, you know, probably sadistic and even disgusting story, but I thought it was a fantastic story and really made the movie even more interesting than it was, and that's really why I love the climax as much as I did. And uh, overall, guys, I love Crimson Peak. I don't know what people's problem is with this movie. I know a lot of people have been saying it's very disappointing. You just need to go into it knowing that it's not a ghost story. It's not. This is not a movie about ghosts. It's a movie about how crazy love can make a person and what that can do to someone. And it really is something terrifying. It's something disturbing. It's something that you probably will never forget if you see it. I definitely recommend you check it out. Also, see in IMAX. It looked amazing in IMAX. And I'm going to definitely give Crimson Peak a 4.5 out of 5 or an A. I absolutely loved it. One of the best movies of the year. And I can't believe more people aren't praising this movie for how great it really is. But that is my review of Crimson Peak. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys saw this movie you have seen. I know I shouldn't have counted this as 31 Days of Horror, but I'm going to. Uh, let me know what you guys saw this movie. And I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for tonight's episode of Girl Meets World. And I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.